So this is a plane mirror and it's really good at reflecting light. Now when we say plane mirror, what we're really talking about is a nice straight mirror. And the way that we can represent it is with a line that comes down here and this shows the reflective side over here and this part here, the kind of dashed line, just shows it's a non-reflective side. So this is our plane mirror. Now if you have a ray of light, what we can look at is maybe that ray of light hits the mirror. So it comes in and it hits the mirror at that point. Now what I'm going to do is just put on an arrow to show the direction of that ray of light. And what I'm then going to do is draw a line at 90 degrees to the surface of this plane mirror. Now it comes out at 90 degrees, so I'm going to use my protractor. Uh, so this is the 90 point up here, so I'm just going to put a dot there. And I can then fill this in and I'm just going to, to show that this isn't the actual ray of light, but just a, um, a normal line, I'm just going to do it as a dashed line like this. And I'm just going to label that as the normal. And this is at 90 degrees. Remember we have the normal contact force, and that's often at 90 degrees to the surface if we're thinking about our forces which act on other objects. Now, there's an angle that we can measure. And the important thing, and this is where lots of people make a mistake, they measure the angle between the incident ray, the ray of light coming in, and the mirror. So this is the way that people often measure. That's not what you should do. You should measure the angle between the incident ray and the normal. So on this one here, if I just measure that, I can see that this ray of light is coming in at 50 degrees. Okay, so this angle here is equal to 50 degrees. And I'm going to label that as little i. And little i is our angle of instance. And what we find is that when you have reflection, the angle of instance is equal to the angle of reflection. So for me to draw that in, I'm just going to again get my uh, protractor. I'm going to measure 50 degrees from this normal line. So that's uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or 130 degrees. So if I just put that line in there, I can then draw in the reflected ray. Again, I'm going to put an arrow to show the direction that that ray of light is traveling. Uh, and this angle here is also equal to 50 degrees. And I'm going to call that little r. And what we can say that r is equal to our angle of reflection. And for reflection, what we find is that i is equal to r. Now when you've got rays of light which are hitting a smooth surface, let's just think about this first ray of light. That's going to reflect, and I'm just going to do a, a rough line here to show the way that that moves off. This first ray of light just moves off like we saw in that last diagram. The one which is parallel to it will also reflect off parallel, and then so will the third. And what we have here is a smooth surface, and this kind of reflection where everything comes in parallel, it comes off parallel, gives us a lovely image. And this is what we call a specular reflection. But what happens in real life where we have lots of rough surfaces? Well, we could still think about this ray of light hitting this surface, and if we were to think about at that particular point where the normal line is, we might draw this first ray of light coming off at an angle like that. But the second one hits it at a different angle. And what you might find is the second ray of light, it bounces off on a line that isn't parallel to the first one. And this other ray of light here might hit the surface and bounce off like this. And what happens is, is this light, as it comes out, rather than going all off in the same direction, it kind of diffuses out. And this is what we call a diffuse reflection. So let's consider a laser, for example. If a laser hits a mirror, what's going to happen is there's this really smooth surface, and what we get here is a specular reflection, which means reflected laser light still stay, stays in this narrow, intense beam. But if we shine that same laser light at a piece of paper, because the paper's quite rough, what we get here is a diffuse reflection. So some of the light is going this way, some of it's going that way, some of it's going that way. And actually this means it's safer because we don't get that intense beam of laser light being reflected from a piece of paper and it's more safe. So these are just two different ways that we have reflection. Sometimes it's specular, sometimes it's diffuse.